So I'm here at the Greenwood uh, Cultural Center, and this is a memorial center for the Tulsa race riots, which basically was when the police and the governmental organizations of Tulsa at the time uh, burned down to the ground, which was what a uh, once a prominent, successful black neighborhood, the Black Wall Street, it was called. So I'm going to go over some of the uh, historical documents here and some of the park and stuff, and just see what we can find out about what the history of this neighborhood was and what actually went down. So this here is a record of some of the entrepreneurs that uh, lived and worked on the Black Wall Street. Um, they say that the post-war period, um, up until World War II actually that is, uh, was the most prosperous time. So let's check out some of the dudes here. Got this guy, a jeweler. Um, this was a theater. This is uh, another jewelry company here. Grocery store. Uh, a chapel. Uh, some dry cleaners. And this is all from around 1940 or so. So this uh, New York Times article from 1996 here is talking about what actually happened. Uh, what is the Tulsa race riot? Uh, June 1st, 1921, 40 city blocks were looted, destroyed, 23 churches, and 1,000 homes and businesses totally ruined. And you can just see um, the devastation. It's incredible. There's just nothing left. And this says that some of them, some of the whites did protect and help the blacks, but obviously a lot didn't, you know. So this article says that not only were their businesses and neighborhood destroyed and churches as well, but a lot of the blacks that survived were put into concentration camps and uh, had to go defer to... Uh, law enforcement to go in and out of their house and they were forced into uh, forced labor by the National Guard. It says here that the National Guard General issued Field Order Number 2 declaring quote, all the able-bodied Negroes remaining in detention camps at the fairgrounds and other places in the city of Tulsa will be required to render such services and perform such labor as is required by the Military Commission and the Red Cross. And the blacks who were affected by this had to um, clean up the debris. They were not only on the receiving end of the violence, but they had to clean it up. And folks uh, tried to cover up the history. They called it an uprising. And it really was kind of a very cynical ploy to take their land and businesses. So uh, here we see some of the refugees, I guess, of the race riot, and they are um, being taken care of by the Reverend R.A. Whitaker, who is the pastor of a nearby church, and uh, even though his church was a casualty, he was still helping out folks in the neighborhood, and here they are, so quite sobering history. Uh, so here you can see that the Dreamland Theater was destroyed, and that was like a very significant theater, uh, totally wrecked, and afterwards just rubble, really, and they rebuilt it. It was one of the first things to come back after um, it was destroyed. So kind of an inspiring, almost like Cinema Paradiso right there. Um, here we see a photograph of uh, the ride in progress, I guess, and how it's burning. And the caption says that um, the black residents were greatly outnumbered and the police were not helping or were actually arresting the black Tulsans who were defending their property. So a uh, really sordid legacy here, very sad. So, of course, Oklahoma is one of the youngest states in the Union. Uh, I think they joined in 1910, something thereabouts, maybe 1905. And uh, Oklahoma's Constitutional Convention excluded all blacks, except for the janitor, who was black. Uh, just after they convened upon getting statehood, the first law passed by the legislature segregated public transportation. Afterwards, they passed further laws that segregated public places, schools, and prohibited interracial marriages. Um, and there was a really famous grandfather clause which required a literacy test, which you can look up online and see if you can pass, 
restricted the right to vote unless one of your grandfathers could have been eligible before 1866. So of course, every single black person was ineligible. So these are the, the schmucks that did it. Thanks, guys. And here we have a newspaper from the time which goes over um, what they actually did. So it was, as you see, uh, 1907, right? And here you go. Here are the bills. Uh, separate coaches and waiting rooms for white and colored passengers on railroad stations. The Tulsa Race Riot of 1921. The Tulsa Race Riot of 1921 was the single worst incident of racial violence in American history. It began after Dick Rowland, a 19 year old African American shoe shiner, was accused of assaulting Sarah Page, a young white elevator operator, in the Drexel Building in downtown Tulsa on May 30, 1921. Spurred on by sensational news coverage, the white lynch mob gathered the next afternoon outside of the Tulsa County Courthouse, where Rowland was being held. But black Tulsans, many of whom were military veterans, were equally determined to prevent the lynching. When a contingent of armed African American men arrived at the, sh at the courthouse, a shot was fired and the city was thrown into chaos. Throughout the long night and day that followed, gangs of whites attacked African Americans on the streets of Tulsa and lit the first fires along the edges of Greenwood, the city's primary African American community. Black defenders made a concerted effort to protect their homes, their families, and their businesses, but when dawn broke, they were simply overwhelmed by an armed white mob numbering in the South, thousands. Block by block, house by house, white Tulsans invaded Greenwood, broke into and looted homes and businesses, and then set them on fire. By the end of the day, Greenwood had been destroyed. The property loss was staggering. More than 1,256 homes and businesses covering more than 30 square city blocks had been burnt to the ground. Although the human loss has never been successfully determined, unofficial estimates suggest that more than 300 people, both black and white, had been killed during the riot. So yeah, as you walk, you see uh, these plaques here, which you might not even notice, but they commemorate a business that used to be here that was destroyed, and there's a lot of them. You can kind of see 